Hello everyone, this is Kravak from Demonotic Gaming, and today we're talking Space Engineers. So, this little tutorial series is going to get you started in Space Engineers. It's not going to be super in-depth or anything, but it's just going to help you get started. How are we going to do that? First thing we're going to do is once we get loaded into the game, we're going to click New Game right here. And you have three tabs across the top. Scenarios, Workshop, and Custom Game. So the scenarios tabs are different scenarios built either by Keen software itself or uh, from workshop downloads uh, that you can get, such as the extended edition Sparks of the Future, which is also by Keen Software House, but it's there. And we will talk about scenarios a little bit later. But let's just say you just want to hop into the action. Well, you're going to click on custom game right here. And there's a couple of different settings you can do. You can do an alien planet, asteroid, armory, crash rest ship. And these are kind of like, kind of like scenarios, but not really. They're still mostly custom games. And they just come with some pre-built stuff like the alien planet and the Earth-like planet both come with a pre-built station on the planet. Uh, Asteroid Armory comes with some pre-built stuff. Crash Red Ship is the same way. And if you want to use any of those, you're absolutely encouraged to. Uh, they're a great way to get started if you're not familiar with the game. But if you're like me and you just want to hop in and figure it out for yourself, then star system might be the way you want to go now once we've chosen one of these situations here on the left then on the right hand side you'll see you can name the game this would be your save name whatever you name it will be your save name you can add a description to the game if you want to and then you have game modes you have two modes one is creative one is survival in creative, there's unlimited resources, instant building, and no death, as the tooltip suggests. And then survival is a realistic deal with inventories and all of that stuff. You have online and offline mode. Um, this basically dictates whether or not your Steam friends can join your personal game. Max players is exactly what it indicates. How many people can join your game and whether or not you want autosave turned on and off. I recommend leaving it on uh, unless you plan on doing some streaming stuff then you might want to turn it off so that you can control the saves underneath all that you have mods and advanced we're going to skip the mods and we're going to do it's going to be a special tutorial all to itself and right now we're going to click advanced settings and we have quite a few things to look at here so you have your inventory, block inventory. So block inventory would be like storage containers or whatever, right? And then your character inventory. And then you have settings like realistic, three times, five times, and 10 times. You can adjust that based off of your personal preference. Same thing with block inventory. You got realistic, three, five, and 10. And then you have efficiencies and speeds settings. So assembly efficiency uh, is a multiplier. Inside the game, once you get inside, there's a couple of different assembler types. And those assembler types dictate how many resources it uses. And this number of assembler efficiency changes that. So a very basic assembler, uh, which might use a lot of resources to create, I don't know, Say an iron rod for example with this set to three five or ten then it would use that much less resource to create the same component uh, refinery speed is how fast things are refined welding speed is how fast you you can weld or your welding ships and the same for grinding speed environment hostility uh, for new players i recommend leaving this on safe just because it throws in asteroids and the problem with the asteroids is they're fairly random and while they no longer always target you or your 
base specifically, they have a high percentage of hitting you. Uh, so if you're a new player, I would recommend leaving this off till you kind of get the ropes of the game. Asteroid amount uh, is tied to environment hostility, and you have none, low, low density, lowest density, normal, and high density. This just controls the amount of asteroids. Sound mode, arcade, or realistic. Personally, I don't really hear the difference between the two, but personal preference. If you can hear the di difference between arcade and realistic, then set it to whatever your personal preference is. Limit your world size. So when the game generates its worlds, uh, basically limit the size of the world. I think the max size of the world is 120 kilometers, which would be what you get when you choose unlimited. View distance is how far you can see within the game, 15 kilometers or they have some performance recommendations. So adjust to your liking. Respawn ship cooldowns. Cooldowns are disabled. So it means that um, you can respawn as many times as you want to. But if you have a cooldown on it, then you'll still be able to respawn. You just will have to wait for a respawn ship. Enable sun rotation. Uh, in Space Engineers, you do not rotate around the sun. The sun rotates around you, or rather, it rotates around the planet you're on. Uh, the game uses skyboxes instead of uh, an actual orbiting mechanic or anything of that nature. Day duration is two hours. Mac objects is how many objects can be in the world, like junk objects or just other type of objects. The more objects you have in the game that's just kind of lying around or floating around, then the bigger the performance hit uh, on your PC. Uh, max objects is kind of a huge deal, particularly on servers. Block limits. Basically, how many blocks uh, can be in the environment, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that's what this one stands for. And you can enable it or disable it. If you try to disable, you'll get this warning pop up and it tells you that block limits are there to ensure good performance and to only disable for experimental purposes. Max ship size and max blocks per player. Uh, you can set this to whatever you want, but basically this sets the number of allowed blocks. So if you have block limits on, then the max size is set for ships is set to 50,000 and max blocks per player is 100,000. So you can build whatever you want as long as it doesn't exceed 100,000 blocks total and 50,000 blocks for a ship. And in later tutorials, we'll discuss this with the ships. If you're just getting started, play with block limits on, but if you really want to push your imagination and or be able to push your imagination, then turn block limits off. Then we get down here into the check blocks. My personal recommendations are cargo ships, economy, weather system, I would say turn off if you're a new player. Aim assist is personal preference, but it's really there for gamepad controllers. So if you're playing with an Xbox or PS5 controller on your computer, that's what it's really there for. Uh, super gridding, I would leave that turned off. Enable sub grid, sub -grid damage. Uh, this is gonna be personal preference. That being said, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish in the game and whether or not you're using mods and things of that nature. Uh, Subgrids do not get damaged by default in the game. And in a later tutorial, we'll discuss the difference between a grid and a subgrid and what that means. Uh, enable spiders, enable wolves. You can turn these on, but they're really just more of an annoyance than anything else. And uh, really, for the rest of this, yeah, I would say leave it all on. And that would be it in the menu sections or the uh, settings sections. And then the next thing you'll do is hit start. All right. So once we hit start, you'll get your little loading screen right here. And you're going to want to read some of these because they actually have some game tips. Yeah, the rest of it is just kind of like uh, quotes from Newton and Pascal and uh, engineers and scientists that sort of thing. And then when you get into this section right here, you get to choose where you want to drop or spawn into the game for the first time. Uh, each one of the, as you highlight them, you'll notice this little box opens up to the left. It gives you the difficulty level, how much oxygen and what the planetary gravity is. And we will discuss planetary gravity and how it affects your gameplay in later tutorials. 
I would recommend that if you want uh, something kind of easy to learn the game on, then I would certainly recommend doing the Earth-like drop pod. And once you select your drop pod, or how you're going to spawn into the game, just click respawn right there. And once you click respawn, you will be well on your way to playing Space Engineers. Well, you'll at least have gotten a start. And that will be it for this tutorial. The next tutorial uh, will be out soon, and it will be, what are your next steps? Once you get into the game, what are your next steps? So stay tuned for that one. Thank you everybody for checking out this tutorial. Please leave your questions and comments down below, and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Have a good day, everybody, and remember, play to win. Bye-bye now.